All right, so let's go ahead and check out some examples from years gone by. Um, I've done this different ways from year to year, but really what we're going to be doing and what this demo is all about is learning how to do different forms of shading to make things look like forms, like 3D hands, okay? Um, so we have here a shaded hand, a cross hatched hand, and a well, the beginnings of a stippled hand. Um, and then on this one, this was the one from last year. I didn't do the stippled hands because there were so many questions about cross hatching. I did too. But what I want you to notice is that it does look like my hand. Well done, Linnea. But I haven't quite finished. And you can tell because my hand looks more white like the paper. So I've kind of finished the finger areas here, but it's not quite done. Everybody feeling me on this? The only area on your hand at the end that should remain white is the area that um, is the highlights, okay? So let's everybody really quickly look at your hand and compare the color of your hand to the paper, okay? Then what I want you to do is I want you to find where your highlights are. As you're, like, if you can put yours in like the, like I'm gonna do this one for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and put my hand in the position, figure out, I would leave your smallest hand for stippling. That would be the wisest situation. Um, I would maybe do your largest hand with shading just cause it will take you less time. Um, but notice if you look at my hand on the screen, if everybody could look up this way, where are my darkest shadows? Right, so the gap or where two things meet because like as I lift my fingers up, there's less shadow on the edge. When my fingers touch, one finger leaves a shadow on the other. The light gets close in those areas and those are where my shadows are. Now if we just look at my middle finger right here, you can see and I can literally draw it on my finger for you where the highlight is, okay? And the highlight is here because it's the highest ridge of my finger and the lights are coming from above. If, it, if the light was coming from below, that would not be the highlight, but it is coming from above. I can also tell that the, this plane, this side of my finger right here is the darker side. Everybody see that? Okay. And then the darkest would be where it curls under and that curliness, the fact that my finger is round, means that the bottom side of my finger is not receiving as much light, okay? So we're, we really want to think about our hands as less of hands and more about color and shadow, okay? So what I'm going to do here is I have started by cleaning up my image. Now I told you guys last semester to clean up your image. You can see here that I have not cleaned up these ones. We're looking for a... Um, a clean tight line. Now the other thing that I'm looking for is for a light line. So right now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to very gently and carefully lighten all my lines. One of the biggest most important things that I want you to know about shading is the job of the shader is to eliminate all lines. I have to get rid of all of these lines. I should not be able to see an outline when I am finished. Okay, now if you're looking at this image here, there are no lines. You can kind of, I, I could, you could maybe make it an effort to sh say that this is, I haven't quite shaded that out enough. But all of these lines, the things that used to be lines, are now shadow and contrast. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, so if I have a really dark line, that's going to force my values to be really, really dark and my skin is not really, really dark, okay? If you had darker skin, you could get away with having really dark lines. So everybody right now, we can go ahead together and lighten our lines, make sure that they're nice and crisp. We're prepping our image for nice uh, shadow. Now, one thing is, is see how I'm erasing my eraser is getting darker and darker. You can just use your clothing. I'm not using denim today. I'm not wearing denim. 
The denim's probably the, that nice coarse roughness of the denim cleans the eraser really well. I don't want to eliminate my lines, I just want to lighten them up. That way I have freedom to choose my values. Now you can draw with your um, pencil tip and you can also draw with your eraser. So just realize that. All right, and for the sake of this demo, because I am recording it, hi, fourth period. Uh, hi. Let's go ahead and stop what we're doing, even if you're not quite done, and watch up here. I want all pencils down and bodies facing forward, okay? Everybody drop them pencils, please. All right, so right here, what I'm gonna do, you guys, I like to start with kind of like I, my pencil loose, because I wanna kind of get a feel for what's there. And I can see here, as I'm looking here, the ridge on the outside is my darkest, which is nice because I'm gonna have that line. So the first thing I wanna do is as I'm shading, as I have this edge, this line, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to fade it out using the side of my pencil. And I'm using the gradient that we used um, in our worksheet that was due, is due right now today. And I'm fading it out so that it does not look like an outline. It looks like gradually getting darker and shadowy, okay? Now, one of the things that is really difficult about shading um, is you really want to continue to look at your artwork so you can see what you're doing, or sorry, your reference, which in this case is my finger. Um, but one of the things that happens is you can kind of get blurry or messy edges that are not very crisp. And you can see here that I'm losing the definition right there. So that just means that I need to crispen up that edge. Make sure that it's, it's got more contrast. If I go darker, let's say I darken the edge with a line. See how that is really crisp and nice? But then that means that I have to fade that out. And that is a little bit too dark for my, my skin color, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna leave that as is for this sake. And I'm just gonna, like looking at the planes, I've got the darkness on the outside here. I've got darkness on this side. I've got a big shadow in this area. I'm using the side of my pencil. And I'm just blocking in where those shadows are. And eventually all of these shadows are going to meet up and become one, okay? I'm leaving the white of the paper for where my highlight is, okay? And now I'm, I'm lifting my pencil up to try to get a crisp edge. I'm starting to get fuzzy edges like I just mentioned. So I go back in with my tip. Everybody see how I'm getting line right now? But then I have to disguise that line by fading it out. I'm disguising those lines. I want to feel the edges. I do not want to see the lines. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so you're just going to go through here and you're going to like even like look at all the values. I don't know if you guys can see that. Look at all the different values on my nail bed alone. Like I want you to get all of that. I want to be able to see the light part of the nail and I want to be able to tell where those shadows are or where those different colors and textures are. And my line, my fingernails are kind of old lady fingernails and I work with clay, so I have lots of ridges in them. So you can get that texture in there by really observing how the values move. If something looks too soft, you just crispen it up with your line and then disguise that line by fading it out, okay? So let me show you guys an example of that. If I have a line here, right? and I shade like a medium value on one side, and then I shade the same medium value on the other side, can you see my line anymore? The line has disappeared. It's gone, okay? So if I do one value on this side, I have to choose a different value, maybe a really light value, on the other side. And that is going to remain some contrast there. Does everybody see that now I can still see that edge? Is that camera? I think that's as close as my camera can get. Um, so let's go ahead right now. Let's all try to go ahead and do our hands together. 
Make sure that I don't want to see any of those lines. We're fading those out. We're gradating. Your values should constantly be changing and moving. Okay? And just observe that on your hand really quick. Look at how, how much your shadows are never the same. If you can get the liney texture, I, I see so much texture on my hand. Remember, it should not look like scribbles or like sketching. That's going to happen if you use the tip. You really want to use the side of your pencil, and that's going to help it look more like a shadow and less like a line. If you need to see an edge, you got to have contrast. So to be able to see an outline or a line or an edge or to feel it, you have to have contrast. One side of that line has to be light and one side of that line has to be darker. If you don't have contrast, it disappears. The more you can look at your hand, the more realistic it's going to be. If you lose your line, that means you may need more contrast. Is somebody still stippling over there? Oh, you're, you're not I see you. Should I be able to see any lines on your image when you're done? No. No, I should be able to feel them, but I don't want to see them. And if you do too much, just tap back in with your eraser and get your highlights back in. Lift your pencil up for edges to get more of that edge nice and sharp. Use the tip of your pencil for edges, but then lay it down and use the side of your pencil to get those shadows. Make it more less liney and more full. the muscles in your hand are really going to leave a shadow. Like this big round part of my hand here, that big muscle at the bottom of my thumb, you can really see how round that looks. Remember how we were talking about the direction of your shading and how you should go with those planes, with those muscles, so that it actually looks round down there. If the bottom muscle of your thumb, that big Thing in the pad of your hand if it looks flat then you're doing it wrong that means you need to check the the values and see how they move so it looks more round start with that crisp edge and then gradate it out fade it away
anywhere you see a line on your hand, that means you need some shadow. And look at the line where it is on your hand and ask yourself, is the shadow on the right side of this line or is it on the left side of this line? Is the right side of this line darker or lighter? Really observe it on your hand. Don't just make it up. Jillian, come over here. You see the lost and found tub right there? Your um, picture that we're shading is in there. Go grab it. Do you guys see this muscle on my, this like ridge where my veins are in my, my wrist? Like that's, that's like a very soft shadow. A lot of the wrinkles are really hard shadows. Like you can really see the lines, but there are a lot of like the muscles and the veins that are underneath the skin. Those are going to leave a lot softer shadows. You have very little white of the paper left when you're finished. Is anybody's lines getting fuzzy? Yeah. They're getting fuzzy. Go back in with the line, crispen it, and then gradate it out one direction. If you have fuzzy edges, it just means you need more contrast at the edge mark. You need more contrast. Good shading makes all the lines disappear. All those lines turn into edges. This crisp edges is another reason why we don't use our finger to shade, because your fingers are big sausage things. You know what I'm saying? You, you don't, you're not going to be able to fine tune drawings with your chubby fingers. So you really want to rely on the sharp tip and point of your pencil. When I'm observing my reference, sometimes I like zoom out and I just kind of feel the values. <coughs> Excuse me. And other times I zoom in and really just look at one section of my finger and really look in one area. Like 
How can I make the ridges on my nail stand out a little bit more? How can I get all those subtle value changes in my nail bed? I'm zooming in. I'm noticing on my nail that the end of my nail, like where it gets long, is white. That means that everything else can't be white. Everything else has got to be a really subtle value. Now ask yourself, as you're looking at your picture, we've been shading it quite a little bit here. Do you have more than five values? Are you shading in one value? A lot of beginners, they'll look for areas of shadow and they'll just punch in like a medium value for everything. I want to be able to see dark darks and light lights and everything in between. You want something to stand out and to look like it's popping forward, you need to put shadow behind it. Usually things on top cast a shadow on things behind. So as I'm getting to my back three fingers, I'm asking myself, which finger is on top? My middle finger is on top of my ring finger. So my middle finger is going to cast a shadow onto my ring finger. So I, I re-get I re that line nice and crisp and then I fade it, up, fade it away.
something else that kind of helps me is sometimes I get bogged down in the shadows, the detailed shadows, you know what I'm saying? The shadows that the creases of my textures are making. So sometimes it's really helpful just to look at the big sausage of a finger and ask yourself, where are those major shadows first? Then go back in and really zoom in and look for those little details. If you're losing lines, go back in, put the line back in, and then fade it out. Has anybody run into the problem where your lines were so dark that now your value is like crazy dark to just try to cover up the lines? That's why you want to kind of start with light lines. You can always go darker, you know what I'm saying? You can always go back and keep adding value, but sometimes if you go too dark, you can't really erase everything. aren't seeing my hand from the same angle just so you know that's how I'm looking at my hand I've been showing you the wrong direction <coughs> all right our, our goal here today we have about 15 minutes till cleanup how many of you guys think you'll have enough time to finish raise your hand if you're gonna finish so if we don't finish this, this shaded hand today in 15 minutes, you need to take it home and do the shading as homework. Um, we are going to do, we'll use half the class next class for stippling or for, for stippling and half for cross hatching. So today we're just concerned about finishing the shaded hand. So the homework would just be the shaded hand. Just the shaded hand, exactly. 